Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, Thursday, August 25th, 2022. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Say to Serve International, first time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. We have come to the end of abundance. That is a great report from a world leader. We're going to be addressing that as we go throughout this presentation. But before I address that, just one quick announcement. Some of you are aware that our presentation on Monday was actually blocked by this media gatekeeper. Won't call the name. You should understand what that means. As I analyzed the situation and prayed, number one, the Lord allowed this media gatekeeper to release the actual video that was blocked worldwide. I'm going to be addressing the actual statements that they were trying to keep in obscurity. Those things must be brought to light, but of sure. Certainly, I cannot present that specific material. So stay tuned. I'm going to launch that platform and I'm going to give the announcement and by God's grace, join me there and I'm going to share with you what they do not want you to hear. Stay tuned for that. But praise God. And again, thank you for your prayers that that which was so important was actually released after it was, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Let's get right into it, friends. Yes, time of plenty, I believe, is running out, if not already run out. We're now living in a time of great famine all over the world. And I'm going to be addressing that. And secondly, I'm going to be addressing this great theme from... <laughs> all these various police stations from green police water police to sunday police watch out for that brothers and sisters what's happening all around the world global food crisis yes all over the world brothers and sisters the signs are here that's what i want you all to realize severe european drought reveals sunken world war ii warships my friends i'm gonna play this clip notice what they are blaming for this massive drought in europe you know what it is climate change listen to this World War II German warships have been exposed in the Danube River due to Europe's worst drought in years. More than 20 hulks were found on a stretch of the Danube in eastern Serbia. Experts say many of the ships still contain ammunition and explosives, which makes moving them dangerous. Scientists believe this year's drought is a consequence of global warming. Oh yes, blame global warming. There it is, my friends. And now another one, Spanish Stonehenge emerges from drought hit dam. Mm -hmm. Notice, hunger stones. Hunger stones, yes. Wrecks and bones. You mean bones, pastor? Yes. Europe's drought brings past to surface. What's happening? Iraq's. Garden of Eden, now like a desert. Pastor, you mean a desert? Yes, that's what it means. Wilderness, that's it. And now come to America. States in the Northeast are suffering severe drought amid alarming expansion of dry conditions. Yes. Let's go to the West Coast. What's happening over there? Crops are failing. Why? Massive, severe drought. American farmers are killing their own crops and selling cows because of what, my friends? Extreme drought, drought, drought. Hmm. 
Listen, Macron warns end of abundance as France faces difficult winter. Beloved, I'm going to share with you a biblical statement that confirms what Macron has just stated is actually a sign of the end. A sign of the end. Look at this, my friends. Take a listen. What we are living through is a time of great upheaval. Firstly, because we are witnessing, and not just since this summer, but over the past few years, the end of what we might have seen as abundance. And for those who enjoyed it, it is also the end of a carefree time. Our freedom, the liberty to which we have grown accustomed to in our lives has a price, and sometimes when we have to defend it, we have to make certain sacrifices as we fight to defend it. Hmm. Friends, notice what the president conflated a while ago, and he did not separate these two points. They're in the same breath. He stated, end of abundance. Then he said, end of freedom. Oh, you missed it. Yes, you missed it. Listen again. What we are living through is a time of great upheaval. Firstly, because we are witnessing, and not just since this summer, but over the past few years, the end of what we might have seen as abundance. And for those who enjoyed it, it is also the end of a carefree time. Our freedom, the liberty to which we have grown accustomed to in our lives has a price, and sometimes when we have to defend it, we have to make certain sacrifices as we fight to defend it. So in other words, a time has come wherein you must sacrifice your freedom, all right, in order to survive in this time of great need. All they're doing, they create the crisis, then they tell us, give up your sac give up your freedoms, give up your liberties, make sacrifices. That's what we are seeing. End of abundance. Do you know what should come to your mind? The words in the book of Genesis regarding the seven years of plenty, the seven years of famine in the time of of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and Joseph. It's right there. Genesis chapter 41. It's right there, friends. Yes. Notice the second sentence. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty, all the plenty shall be forgotten. Listen. The famine shall consume the land. The plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. For that famine shall be very grievous. Here is a leader of a prominent nation actually quoting the words of Scripture, applying it to the present dire situation. What if that leader had said, you know what, to combat these calamities, I want everyone in this nation to worship, to rest on Sunday. Would that not awaken the ten virgins? Would that not awaken the ten virgins? At that point, would we be found with oil in our lamps? Or would we be found without oil, without conversion, without the practical experience? Would we be found running hither and thither, east, north, to receive what we should have had? Brothers and sisters, listen. End of abundance. He states, the country was at a tipping point and faced a difficult winter and a new era of instability caused by climate change over and over again brothers and sisters now hold on there let's make sure you understand what's happening here so here we have emmanuel macron stating climate change is not bringing the end of abundance the end of your freedoms climate change in genesis chapter 41 what did joseph say so Pharaoh brought the calamities, seven fat cows, seven skinny cows, seven healthy corn, seven withered 
corn. What brought that? Joseph said the east wind. The east wind. Today we would call that climate calamity. Yep, we're here my friends. We're here, notice. By the way, and we're told in a statement, volume 8, page 153. Every church, yes my friends, every seven-day Adventist, yes, that bears that name should be to the world as Joseph was in Egypt, as Daniel and the three Hebrews were in Babylon. Are we preparing? Are we preparing? One more time. Are we preparing the five keys of survival? There it is. Blue words on top. What we are currently living through is a kind of major tipping point of a great upheaval. Notice how many times the president mentioned the word end. We are living the end of what could have seemed an era of abundance. The end of the abundance of products, of technologies that seemed always available. The end of the abundance of land. The end of the abundance of materials. The end of the abundance of of water yes pause it right there mm -hmm. so these things that we have taken for granted stating it will always be available the president of friends is telling not only his residents and citizens but the whole world the things that we think will always be available one day will come to an end if that does not strike hmm, a chord, yes, in our being, I'm not sure what else will. Let's break that down. What things we all take for granted and really believe these things will always be available. As a result, we don't need to listen to a lesson message about end time events and preparation. Because all these things will always be available. What are some of those things? Talk to me, those of you who are alive. Let me see your comments. What are some of those things? Well, he mentioned water. Let's stay right there on the utilities. Electricity. What else? Well, let's stay right there. Hmm? What about uh, communication devices? Your cell phone connection. Landline. What else? Come on. Are we together? Let me go live. Okay, what else? Yes. Always be okay. Food. All right. What else? Talk to me. Internet. Yes. What else? Uh, gas. You mean gas stoves? Yes. What else? Okay. Someone put Bible. Housing. That's it. What else? Someone put toilet paper. Yes. Transportation. Hmm? Medical care, the big one, medical care, money, access to money, access to banking. Someone put, yes, it's all there. Employment, business. Oh, brother, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Gross, it's all there. Groceries, it's all there. Beloved, let's not take anything for granted. The signs are ominous. The five keys of survival are necessary. Let's move on. Last phrase. Last sentence he says. Macron said friends and the French people felt they were living through a series of crises. A series of crises, each worse than the last. What came to my mind is a statement in Great Controversy, page 589. Yes, the calamities. The pestilences, yes, the series of crises. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Thank you. Thank you. Now, beloved, we just listed many of the things that we think will always be available. Let me ask you one. What about liberties? What about liberties? We just saw what Pestilence 19 did. 
Did we not always think we'll always have liberties? Why? We live in the land of the free, the home of the brave. This is the United States of America. We sing the song, proud to be an American. Proud to be what? Proud to be what? Hmm. We saw that what we took for granted was so easily stripped away from us as a band-aid being stripped away from a wound, ripped off a wound. And what happens when a band-aid is placed on a wound, right? And you have the scab beginning to form, the hair of the skin around that. You rip that band-aid off. What happens? Yes, my friends, you cringe. You wince. Painful. Yes. What happened recently, I am telling you, these are signs confirming the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Let me give you one. Great Controversy, page 588, volume 5, page 451. Liberty of conscience will be trampled underfoot. Every principle of the U.S. Constitution shall be repudiated. It's here. You shall be hated of all nations. Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Move on, my friends. Then will come the enforcement of the National Sunday Law. Take nothing for granted. By the way, I'll give you one more. What about, what about fellowship from loved ones? We take that for granted. Listen, my brother will always be here for me. My sister will always be here for me. My wife, my spouse, my husband will always be here for me. That's what we normally say. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Brother shall betray brother, mother against son, daughter against uh, against father, father against mother, husband against wife. Take nothing for granted. The only source of strength and companionship that is guaranteed, brothers and sisters, is Jesus Christ. That friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Take nothing for granted, brothers and sisters. Are these points clear? Is the trumpet loud and clear? Okay, I'm pleading. Let's move on. Here it is. Macron says the French people have to make sacrifices. Listen to what he said next. He says freedom has a cost. The crises we're going through in order to endure and persevere as a people through these crises climate change you have to give up some of your freedoms do you think he's bluffing do you think he's simply using rhetoric that will not have great impact negative impact we just saw that a few a few months ago yes to combat the crises in the land. Give up your freedoms. You can't shop here. You can't shop there. On this day, only on that day, uh, everything is being rationed. Brothers and sisters, you can't travel here unless we tell you you must wear this or else. Come on, friends. Come on. Let's see what time we're living in, all right? Let's move on. And now we're seeing the fulfillment of Luke 21. Beloved, sometimes I feel when I come to midday power surge with you that some people, they love to hear the truth, but they're not allowing the truth to leave an indelible mark upon their minds. Once the presentation is over, it seems as if the information went in through one ear and out through the next. It did not resonate. Listen, I want the truth to stain your mind as bleach, you know, bleach, chlorine bleach, stain black garments. I want your minds to be stained with truth, stained with the blood of Jesus Christ, stained with the life of Jesus Christ. Okay. 
Imagine Christ at the first advent pleading with his disciples and those who should come thereafter, saying, These are the signs that will precede my return when you begin to see them. Get ready and remain ready. Now, the actual signs, you will see them in the form of beta testing. The actual signs, you will see them in the form of a dress rehearsal. In other words, you'll see the signs. The end won't come right away. The signs will continue, the signs will continue, and the signs will have, as it were, like a snowball effect. A small little snowball rolling down a snow hill. Yes, what happens? It creates an effect. That small ball becomes bigger. You get the point. The signs are here. Look at this. First. Luke 21. What does Christ say in Luke 21? When you shall see Jerusalem surrounded with armies. No. Do not conjecture. No. Do not speculate. No, do not be incredulous. Don't be apathetic. Take it seriously. No, the desolation thereof is nigh. If you're in the cities, flee to the country now. That's what he said, now. Well, brothers and sisters, in this segment, I'm going to conflate. I won't separate. I'm going to conflate a few things. All these armies are being formed. All in the context of combating economic crises, climate crises, and pestilence crises, and all these, even wars, war crises, all of these are causing nations to roll out civilian forces, adding to the constabulary force. Why? Why? God's people are being surrounded. They will have plausible reasons for all these armies. But brothers and sisters, they have ulterior motives. I know you heard of the water police. I covered that recently. You have heard of the Sunday law police. Now we're hearing of green police. In the same context of Macron saying, freedom has a cost, make sacrifices, give up your freedoms. You never hear them saying, we the leaders will give up our freedoms. It's never them. It's always the people. And this is what makes it wrong, a travesty. Jesus Christ. Everything he asks us to do, he models it. The shepherd goes before the sheep. These men are shepherds. They are tyrants. They're not shepherds. They're hirelings. I'm telling you, my friends. And listen, listen. If one nation say, listen, we will react this way to combat calamities by launching these various uh, officers, to police civilians, we would say, well, it's an anomaly. It's an isolated case. All right. It, but for, when you see other nations doing the same thing to combat similar crisis, it's no longer an aberration in one nation. Now you can see it is what? It is a synchronized event they are following a particular script am i making sense am i making sense yes they are following the script of the final act in the drama let's get to it i speak too much look at this my friends there it is what's the headline there great reset french government to recruit three thousand green police to combat what, my friends? Climate change. How many? 3,000? Listen to this. I'll give you two clips. In the face of wildfires in France, the government may be turning to increased law enforcement to crack down on the root problems. The country's interior minister proposing 3,000 so-called green police to tackle the issue of climate change. 
The objective is to address criminal activity that poses a threat to the environment. Mm, mm, mm. Clip two, listen. And although the creation of the Green Police in France is only in its infancy, residents are already wondering what kind of power the agents will have to impose the government's will in the name of protecting the environment. In Rome, for Newsmax, I'm Alex Alvin. Green police, yes, green police, the crisis is upon us. I'm going to come back to green. Look at this, my friends, there it is. And notice, where's France? Where is France? Is France not in Europe? Is it not a part of the European Union? Yes, it is. Look at the headline right there. It says, watch carefully, EU crisis. The chief calls for more powers. More powers. What powers? Friends, look at this. Uh, red words. As the crises continue, right? As global warming continues to get more severe. That's the blue words. Skip on down to the red words now. That could open the door to the creation of a permanent. I didn't say temporary. Permanent EU civil protection force so beloved what they are now installing implementing to combat these crises they're not going to recant they're not going to retract these plans are not going to be thwarted yes they're going to make sure they put gorilla glue crazy glue yes tact they're not going to ease up. Permanent, my friends. Listen, people now who are anti the green agenda and are protesting, what's happening? Beloved, they are being arrested. They are being fined. What is this telling us, my friends? Those individuals who abjure the policies to combat the so-called crises in the land, Specifically, Sunday worship by law to combat the so-called climate change and the economic crisis. They are also going to be arrested, prosecuted, persecuted, and a few are going to be martyred. The beta testing is here. The dress rehearsal is here. While they are preparing to play their role, in the final act of the drama, are we preparing to take the stage on the side of Christ to act our play, our part in the final act in the drama? Oh, brothers and sisters, don't give me a headache. Please, I'm pleading with us. Let's be found prepared. Look at this, friends. You remember the water police? And the next door snitch. Listen, informers next door. We're not looking really for their money. That doesn't get us more water. We're trying to get behavioral change. Well, it starts with a warning citation. And then after that, uh, in phase three of the ordinance, it starts at $200. The next uh, violation is $400. And then the one after that is $600. All the way up to the next one being, uh, we can restrict their water flow if they're not in compliance. Wait a minute. Wait, so much here. How many take water for granted? It's always going to be available. Well, if you refuse to go along with their agenda, they're telling you what's happening here. Okay? And notice, what's happening in France? The drought, the climate change, the fires, adding 3,000 green police, plus giving up your rights, giving up your freedoms, make sacrifices, the end of abundance, that's in France. And now in America, you're seeing the connection here? We are in the most restrictive phase we've ever been. Uh, previous to that, we were in phase two of the water conservation ordinance so, uh, since 2009. 
So we've been doing uh, conservation here in Los Angeles for a, for a very long time. And how would they know? How would they know which neighbor is compliant to these diabolical policies? The red word says, complaints will come from your next door neighbor. Informants. That's it, my friends. Why? They want you to change your behavior. Sunday's coming, my friends. That's it. The ancient inquisitors, the ancient informers will have their counterpart in the last days, your next door neighbor. So how do we solve that? How do we solve that? When they will blame us for famine, blame us for pestilence, blame us for calamities. How can we solve that? It's right there. Adventist home, page 141. Last sentence. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded, closer together, and where you will be free from the interference of enemies, informants. Yes. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not going to stop there. I'm still addressing this segment. As I went through that, that now in Europe, in America, they have these civilian armies going on. Brothers and sisters, just remember this. What did the IRS just do recently, my friends? 87,000 new employees. Now, stop right there. Before I come to America, I simply did that to make a connection, to connect the dots. Do you know, several years ago, a new story broke. It went viral and I covered it. What was that, Pastor? I'll tell you. Do you recall an article stating the EU army going full speed ahead? And notice who would be in charge of the EU new army. Who? Who? Who lost her husband? Which church lost her husband? And she must regain her husband. The kings of nations, prime ministers, presidents, who? Chancellors, who? The Pope of Rome. That's what I want you to see. There it is, my friends. There it is. The dawn of the EU army. Notice, didn't say dusk. Dawn. What is dawn? What time of the day is dawn? And that doesn't mean dawn detergent dish washing liquid. All right? Or for your clothes. That's dawn. Not dawn, your family member. Not Miss Dawn, your co-worker. Not Miss Dawn. Your next door neighbor. What is dawn? Hmm? The rising of the sun. The rising of the sun. Morning. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Look at this, my friends. And who will be the head, the leader? The Pope of Rome. Divine intervention. EU leaders will turn to whom? The Pope. Blue words in the article underlined. It says, uh, the head of the Catholic Church was the only moral authority European politicians had left to follow. The Pope, blue words below, the Pope is the ultimate world leader. Do I have your attention, my friends? Does God have your attention? Sunday is rising. Sunday is rising. The Sunday law is rising. The dawn the dawn and as we see that oh my friends the songwriter says oh we see the gleams of the golden morning piercing through the night of gloom oh we see the gleams of the golden morning that will burst the tomb okay can i now get back to america all right there it is, my friends. Armies and armies and armies and armies and armies. Do you not see it, my friends? In every aspect of life. Notice, pestilences, 
armies. Calamities, climate change, armies. Notice now, eco wars, wars, armies. Economic crises, armies, armies, armies. We are being surrounded. There it is, friends. I won't spend much time on that. To, come, to enforce and to combat certain speeches we need, eight to 7,000 more soldiers. And I believe, I believe that was what happened to the video I did for Midday Power Surge this past Monday when they blocked it worldwide. Remember, my opening remarks, I'm going to cover that. But there it is, my friends. Get out of the speech police. The speech police headline. The speech police business. Get out. The signs are here, friends. I won't read all of this. We have covered that before. The armies are here. Yes. The armies are here, brothers and sisters. Listen. It says, I mean, you can read that, the headline. Let me move on from that. The armies are here. Yes. To get free speech, you have to give up. In the first place, you shouldn't have it. Tax exempt status, 501c3. Get out of the speech police business. The end. The end is right upon us, brothers and sisters. The signs are here, beloved. Will you allow me to close now? Someone is saying, Pastor, please don't finish yet. Come on, Pastor, give us more. I'll give you more. I'll give you more. But the more I'm going to give you, it's not more current events. The current events are simply to fulfill. Time is fulfilled. Kingdom of God is at hand. That's it. It's time now to repent and believe. Repent and receive hope. Repent and have the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, beloved, I'm going to again share with you the pivoting point. Macron over and over again said the end of abundance, the end of freedoms, the end of food, the end of materials, the end of technologies. The end of water. Fill my cup, Lord. Lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. The end of abundance. Let me tell you something. As faithful Christians, by God's grace, as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, as Seventh-day Sabbath keeping Christians. We should not fear the end. Did you hear me? We should never be trepid about the end, but be bold in Christ. Number one, here's the reason. The Bible teaches in our DNA is written on every nerve, cell, sinew. Yes, it's the word end. The Sabbath represents the end. Genesis chapter 2, verse number 2, verse number 3, God's word says, And on the seventh day, God ended his work. The media is telling us the end, the end, the end. And what you thought, listen to me attentively, what you thought will always be available will one day come to an end. We listed several things previously. I'm going to give you one more as I close. Many people believe the door of salvation will always be open to them. So as a result, they delay surrendering all to Christ. As a result, they procrastinate the work of spiritual preparation and practical preparation. But one day, that opportunity that door will be shut the end the end one more time the end will come this is the seventh day sabbath message christ's work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary one day what will christ say talk to me those of you alive similar words to what he said in matthew at the cross, 
it is finished. What will he say? Revelation 16 verse 17. Talk to me. Thank you. It is done. It is done. And friends, I'm going to put a nail in a sure place. In Revelation chapter 18. The Bible tells us something about abundance. Listen, the leader of friends, leaders of the world are telling us the end of abundance is here. Listen, whose end of abundance? It's never theirs, never them. Listen, Revelation 18, verse 2, Babylon, verse 3, the kings of the earth, prime ministers, presidents, chancellors. The merchants of the earth, the Bible says, they are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And verse number 13, verse 14, the people are slaves, but they have all the abundance. That's the hypocrisy. That's the tyrannical system. And friends, Matthew 24, what was the question of Christ's disciples in Matthew 24, verse 3, they asked Christ, What shall be the sign of thy coming? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And brothers and sisters, what did Jesus say? Yes, in verse number 14, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then and then shall the end the end come yes it's natural it's providential for us as christians to always want to know wanting to know what signs will lead to the end are we not the modern disciples and apostles of christ yes it's natural. Let no man deceive you. It's time to get prepared. We are told in Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 24, 72 weeks are determined upon thy people. Yes, to do what? To finish the transgressions, to make an end of sins. As Christ is about to end the work in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary as the leaders of the world are saying the end the end the end is come it's time for us as god's people to plead with christ daily to give us the will the desire the power the consistency yes consistency to make an end an end of sins first peter chapter 4 the Bible says in verse number 7, But the end of all things, the end of all things is at hand. What are we to do now? Be therefore sober, watch unto prayer. Sober, watch unto prayer. Those who are inebriated, those who are drunk, they sleep. They are not coherent. And what were Peter, James, and John doing? You know, just before that crisis, what were they doing? My friends, they were sleeping. But what were the words of Christ to them? Watch, pray. It's right there. James chapter 5. The end, the end. I want to encourage you now. The end, the end. Beloved, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, I'll come back to James shortly. Matthew 24, the same scene. What will be the sign of thy coming and the end? In verse number 12, verse 13, Jesus said to them, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that endureth, Unto the end, endure to the end. One more time, endure to the end. The same shall be saved. Today I say, Lord, give me endurance. What do you say, those of you who are alive? What do you say, Lord, give me endurance? Endurance, put pep in your step. Prayer, 
Yes, endurance, patience. I'll get to the song shortly. My friends, James chapter 5. You, could, you can read that. Verse 11, verse 12, with Job chapter 42. And verse number 12, go with me to Psalm 39. The end. The end. Psalm 39. The signs are here, friends. Psalm 39. The Bible says in verse number 4 of Psalm 39, God's Word says, where am I? In verse number 4, friends, this is an actual scripture song. Psalm 39. Listen to these words as I bring this to a close. It says, Lord, make me to know mine end. Stop it right there. Pause it right there. Yes, Dr. Mocker and Dr. Scoffer, you always talk about the end. What does Psalm 39 say? Hmm, you cynic, listen, verse 4, it's a prayer. It's David, the psalmist, speaking to God. Whenever we read words from the person to God, make those words yours as I will make it mine. Verse 4, Lord. Make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail, how frail I am. How many of us feel frail physically, frail mentally, emotionally, frail spiritually? Listen, verse 5, Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. We are nothing, even in our best state. Listen, surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not. Who shall gather them? And now, Lord, it's a prayer. And now, Lord, what wait I for? What am I waiting for? It's a prayer. My hope is in thee. My hope is in thee. In whom is your hope? In whom is your hope? Listen, verse 8, it's a prayer. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Daniel 9, verse 24. Finish transgressions. Make an end of sin. Verse 8, deliver me from all. All means everyone. All my transgressions. It's my prayer. Is this your prayer? Listen, make me not the reproach of the foolish. Oh Lord, verse 9, I was dumb, I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. I was dumb, I opened not my mouth. Verse, verse, verse 8, make me not a reproach. What is the psalmist praying to God saying? Who went through reproach? Who said, as a lamb brought to the slaughter? He openeth not his mouth. Isaiah 53. It was Christ. The psalmist was saying what Christ encountered, he will encounter. What Christ encountered, we will encounter. This is the prayer of the hour. It's meat in due season. It is the prayer for this time. Is the trumpet loud and clear? Listen. The prayer continues. Verse 11. When thou with rebukes doth correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give air to my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. Have you gone through a crisis recently that made you cry? Something in your marriage, something in your home, something on the job, something in the company business, something with health, a diagnosis, pain. 
Hear my prayer, O Lord. Is this not midday power surge? Or is it simply a news broadcast? Beloved, it's the former. Yes, it's the former. Listen, listen. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Oh, spear me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Amen. Verse 13, Oh, spear me that I may recover strength. Have you been failing in strength? That's your prayer. Lord, Lord, spear me. Help me to recover strength physically, mentally, yes. Emotionally, yes. Spiritually, strength. That's what we need, friends. Strength. All right. Now, what shall I more say? What shall I more say? It says, before I go hence and be no more. with hence? Hence means here. Before I go here and be no more. What is he talking about? Before I go to the grave. Before I die. Oh Lord, help me to recover strength before I die. What a prayer. Is there anybody on the sick bed right now listening to midday power surge? That power is power synonymous to strength. Yes, recover strength. Is there anybody right now in the recovery room on your cell phone watching, listening to midday power surge? Recovery is yours. Just pray it. The prayer of faith will save. The prayer of faith will heal. The prayer of faith will strengthen. James chapter 5 confirmed. Well, let me close. Sister Jomana Souders will sing the song, Fill my cup, Lord. Yes, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Yes, send in your prayer request. And by God's grace, we will return. Sister, the mic is yours. Thank you so much for joining us for another soul stirring midday power search. Let us remember that only Jesus can quench the thirsting of our souls. Like a woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I heard my Savior speaking, Draw from my well that never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. There are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures of things of food. But none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and 
make me whole. So my children, if the things this world gives you leaves hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make Amen. Father in heaven, your people have sent in their prayer requests. We pray the words of Psalm 39. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. O oh, spear me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for filling my cup, filling our cup. Thank you for this midday power surge. Bring us back at the appointed time. Keep us faithful, we pray, in these end times. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha. <laughs>